Undoubtedly, his greatest contributions were in the field of psychohistory. Selden found the field little more than a set of vague axioms. He left it a profound statistical science. The best existing authority we have for the details of his life is the biography written by Gal Dornick, who, as a young man, met Selden two years before the great mathematician's death. The Story of the Meeting, Encyclopedia Galactica. Hey guys, Pete here. Today I'm going to look at this old foundation teaser and try to break it down because I just reread the whole series and I'm kind of fascinated to see how they try to adapt it. The original foundation series by Isaac Asimov first released as short stories published in the 1940s, then collected and published in a trilogy of novels in the 1950s, is a classic by any definition. It's set more than 21,000 years in the future. It has this amazing scope that includes a galactic empire of more than 25 million worlds. That's made possible by hyperspatial travel. And I mean, this series basically influenced all of the most popular sci-fi you're familiar with. At the same time, it's a really tough adaptation because it's missing most of the key ingredients that we expect in a television series. I think the biggest obstacle is that the story takes place over a thousand years. Characters come and go, they never really get developed, and in a way, that's what we watch TV for. Spoilers-wise, I'm going to give you background information about what the story's about. The kind of stuff you'd learn from reading a blurb about the show, or the stories that it's based on. I'm not going to get into what happens at the end. With that out of the way, let's look at what we see. Going off the casting announcements and footage they use here, to me it looks like they're going to focus on the initial two or three stories in the first book for season one. That seems like a good idea considering how fast time passes in the series. We're introduced to Gal Dornick, who's boarding a transport ship on her homeworld of Synax. And we get a look at several shots of her leaving cut throughout the teaser. Gal's a mathematician that's described as a country boy. Obviously, the show did a gender swap here, and she's heading to the Empire's capital of Trantor for the first time. In the voiceover, we hear her say, only we can shorten the darkness, and I'll come back to that in a bit. We also get our first look at Harry Selden, played by Jared Harris, who looks like he's being arrested or something along those lines. He looks kind of dirty and disheveled here, which means they might be adding some scenes that lead up to an appearance in court he has in the books. There's an unknown character looking at this dark landscape with fires burning in the distance. This isn't anything you would recognize from the first book, but this might be tied into some of the stuff that we learn about the planet of Trantor in the prequels that they put out years after the original trilogy. If I was forced into guessing what this is, I would say it probably has something to do with powering the planet Trantor, and that this character may have been added as someone who's working with Selden, who can serve as a companion for Gal on her trip from Trantor to Terminus. There's a handful of mysterious space shots that could be anything. This one that looks really cool could possibly be related to hyperspace since they're going to have to set that up and somewhat explain how people move around the galaxy so fast. There's another unknown character at night with something like a lantern. If I had to guess about this, I would say that this is either this character's home world or more likely the world the psycho historians get exiled to, which is called Terminus. There's a native creature that comes out of the dark, and it's all probably related to adding depth to the world building. This all goes back to what I was saying in the beginning. Most of what we learn about the Galactic Empire and all of its worlds and systems and everything else that's going on in this huge story, we find out through conversations with two people in a room. So the TV series is going to have to show us all this stuff. We can't have a bunch of exposition dumps. So it makes sense for us to see a lot of different stuff to flesh out the world that doesn't necessarily come from the early stories in the book. We see the interior of a ship. It's probably the same one Gal was boarding heading to Trantor. This looks pretty great and it looks like you can see the approach to Trantor through the window. You sort of see a planet come into view. Then there's this showrunner interview with David Goyer, which really feels kind of unnecessary in relation to the show. There's some interesting behind the scenes shots here, but all it really serves to do is make it clear that they're not holding back budget wise in trying to realize this thing. There's not a whole lot of actual footage in this trailer, most likely because the pandemic shut down production. So I guess they wanted to come out with something here and they threw this in as a way to introduce the series. 
After that, we get a closer look at Trantor. We see a tower coming off the surface of the planet into space, and this appears to be a scene taken directly from the beginning of the first book. After Gal arrives, she wants to see what the planet looks like, so she takes an elevator ride to an observation deck. One thing that stood out to me on this reread was that in this first story, the planet Trantor is actually the main character. Yeah, we do meet Harry Seldon, we get an idea of what psychohistory is. But Gal coming from her home planet and seeing this massive, crazy capital city slash planet for the first time. Trantor is amazing, and I could definitely make a whole video about it. But what's important for this video is to say that it gives us a really good idea of what the Galactic Empire is like. So there's a lot of potential to see a lot of really cool stuff in this first season, and it's probably what I'm most excited about as far as the visuals are concerned. After that, we see Gal being led into the university, where Selden works on the psychohistory project, and this looks like it leads to their formal introduction. Harry Selden says, they're going to arrest me tomorrow, and Gal looks pretty disappointed about the circumstances here, especially when she finds out she's probably getting arrested too. He asks if she's familiar with his work, she says in theory, and he quickly corrects her saying it's not a theory. So the premise of the story is that this guy, Harry Selden, has created this field of psychohistory, which is able to use mathematics to predict where things are going basically. It doesn't work on the level of individuals, but it is able to look at big groups of people and come to conclusions about where society is headed. He's been working on it for a long time, and he's come to the conclusion that not only will the Empire fall, that Trantor itself will fall, but that that's going to lead to 30,000 years of barbarism. Basically, everything's going to go backwards. And at this point, he doesn't believe that can be stopped. But if they apply this science of psychohistory, make their decisions based on what it tells them, then they can shorten that period of time from 30,000 years down to 1,000 years, and then a better second empire can emerge and put things on the right path. Gal Dornick had no idea. She just got her PhD. She's just come into the big city for the first time from her little home planet in the middle of nowhere. And now she's getting hit with the idea that her new boss is getting arrested. She's getting arrested too. And as it's mentioned in the blurb I opened the video with, she'll find out her job is to actually help move the project to its new center, which is going to be on an insignificant, mostly uninhabited planet called Terminus. On top of everything else she's learning, one of the key axioms of psychohistory is that people can't know what it predicted ahead of time. They just basically have to follow the plan. If everyone knew what was supposed to happen, then that would change things. It kind of makes sense, right? So Gal doesn't exist in the story for a long time, but she does have an important role. As does this other character we meet in the trailer, Salver Hardin. We see her, which is another instance of gender swapping. Hardin was a man in the story. He was the first mayor of Terminus, the Foundation's homeworld. Part of Harry's plan was to send Gal Dornick to set things up there. And because things are headed towards barbarism, the idea is that he's sending a bunch of scientists who can collect all the important knowledge and create the Encyclopedia Galactica. A way for humanity to retain all the important things it's learned at the height of the Galactic Empire. We see Salver in a couple of shots here. I guess that these are on Terminus, but again, this could be her home world giving us an idea of where she comes from, who she is as a character. I guess I should mention all the gender swapping. Most of these characters aren't fleshed out in the books, so they could be male or female. It doesn't make a big difference. And to be honest, there really aren't any women in the first book, so it's probably a good idea to add some here and there. The other thing we see on Trantor is the Emperor. He's credited as playing Brother Day. There's a Brother Dusk, whose description says he's the oldest member of the royal family, and a Brother Dawn, who we see a couple of times. And this isn't something that comes from the books. What we do know about the Emperor at this time is that he's in charge of a dying empire. And at this point, he's not really that powerful. Things are really under the control of the aristocrats that are around him. And essentially, the Emperor and the people around him holding on to power is a big factor in why the Empire can't save itself. There's definitely a lot of potential for interesting stuff there. But the actual stories, they move away from Trantor, and the Empire recedes into the background for quite a few years. 
So it'll be interesting to see what they do. I imagine introducing this brother Don character, a young member of the royal family, sets up his return as an adult in some of the later stories, since everyone we meet at the very beginning won't live very long into that 1,000 year plan. The show could play around with it a little bit, and you think that they might, considering they cast Jared Harris and Lee Pace here, but they've also said that they plan on doing the whole story, if they get the chance, something like eight seasons and 80 episodes, so they can't really linger on the origins that much. Overall, this trailer looks fantastic. It looks like they're really going out of their way to make this a beautiful looking series. And as a fan of the original stories, I really hope that they're able to do that. It really won't be easy. The book as it is, is strange by today's standards, but it's really effective at doing what it does. You could tell that Asimov is very interested in making sure it's clear what he's trying to say. And as I mentioned, that definitely comes down to people talking to each other, explaining things to each other, over and over, really. And that's just not something that naturally translates to long-form TV. There is one other thing that is in this trailer that really stands out, but it's one of those things that I can't really say anything about. There's another character here who's a part of the series, but doesn't play a part in the first book. Edo Demerzel. This is another gender swap, but I really don't know how they're integrating this right here at this point. I have have theories based on what I know about the ending of the series, but I don't think that we should get into that in this video. We also see some action sequences here, and that's another thing that is missing from this series as far as the books are concerned. There's virtually no action sequences throughout the entire thing, so it does make sense that the show will add those in there to keep people interested. So there's a lot of potential. I hope it's realized. I'd love to hear what you think. If you're a big fan of the series, I think that you would agree with me that in most cases, when you think of an adaptation, you want it to be as close as it can be to the source material. But this is a really strange case where I think that that would actually be terrible. So let me know if you think they can pull it off, what you're hoping they'll be able to get through, what you're hoping to see, and really any worries that you have. The thing about Foundation is the Selden plan and the Foundations are necessary according to psychohistory. And psychohistory is based on irrefutable science. The idea that nobody can know why they're doing what they're doing makes things really interesting. But it doesn't necessarily make the strong case that this is the way it has to be. What I like about these books is that you fill in so much of the blanks yourself with your own imagination in the way you kind of create everything around the periphery and you can focus in on the philosophical, the ideas. It's really a series about ideas. That's where it's strongest. And the fall of an empire, you know, it's a good time to think about that. I guess what it'll come down to is, can they make it compelling TV? And will where their imaginations go be the same as where ours did when we read it for the first time? I think that's a good place to leave it. I could definitely do some more foundation background videos. I'm not sure if there's any interest for it right now, but we'll see what happens with this one. For the last few weeks, I've been immersed, so I've been thinking about all this stuff. I just don't know if anybody's going to be watching these at this time. So let me know what you think in the comments. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.